Hello, and welcome back to Critical Reactions. We are doing our 5,000 sub uh, Q&A. That's actually really a lot closer to my 6,000 sub milestone. Uh, and I guess it's just kind of apropos that this was supposed to come out Monday, and it came out today instead. So not only were we late in the cosmic idea that, you know, we're almost a thousand subs later, but also the fact that I had a specific date and relate on that too. So that's just uh, how things happened. We had some technical difficulties on Monday and I ended up, I ended up with a 50 minute video with no audio. That's not a very good Q and A. You just see me moving my hands around like an idiot. So, uh, Questions were fielded from the YouTube comment section as well as Twitter and Patreon. If you're interested in either of those, links are there as well as in the description. And uh, I didn't really have an easy way to put the comments on the screen, so I will just be reading the names out. I think that's going to work good for now. Um, so yeah, let's see. We got a... Uh, we got a lot of similar questions, so we're going to do uh, these kind of group questions first, and then after that we're going to move into some individual unique questions. Uh, one of the most uh, asked ones was my favorite bands, uh, Tamati Watson, Sepia, Citrus, Jacob Nyman, uh, The Vadriger. They all asked me who my favorite bands were, or if I had any bands I respected musically, um, and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, my top three favorite bands of all time, with no questions asked, I got, uh, The Human Abstract, all, I got their entire discography, and as you can see, um, their latest album, their 2008, uh, Digital Veil, signed by everybody. Uh, my next big one, as I'm sure some of you know, because I did a video on it, uh, was Periphery. I don't have their entire discography. I would like to pick up Periphery 4 and 3. Um, 1 and 2 are pretty good. I, I enjoy them, but they you can definitely tell they've matured since then. Um, so I'm, I'm not... If I don't get Periphery 1 and 2, that's, that's not a, a deal breaker. But 3 and 4, especially 4. Hail Stan is a fantastic album. And my number one band of all time is probably going to surprise a bunch of y'all. The Used. This is their first two albums. Um, I I would like to get the rest of their discography, but it's uh you know CDs CDs can get expensive, especially when every week you got four more bands added to your wish list. So you know you got to pick and choose what you're what you're picking up. Um, I, but pretty much the running theme with those three bands is that none of them have produced a bad song, as far as I'm concerned. I love everything they've done. Um, not every song is perfect, but every song is great, and that's 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 why I enjoy them. Um, Tamati Watson asked if I have any guilty pleasure bands, and uh, it kind of goes into a question that James Hill asks, where he says, "Do I have any time and place music that uh, I don't really listen to anymore, but they evoke uh, an overwhelming amount of nostalgia?" In his instance, he doesn't listen to Blink-182, but if he listens to What's My Age Again, you know, it transports him back to being uh, a 12-year-old sitting on his couch. And I do. I do have that. I have uh, Edema. Both of their first two albums with uh, the original singer. I think his name was Mark. He's the uh, stepbrother of, of Korn's Jonathan Davis. Um... I don't really like Edema anymore. I guess you could call it a guilty pleasure. I do put it on from time to time, but it's mostly to hit that nostalgia and kind of transport me back. Uh, if I look at the music just on its face value, it's uh, it's kind of cringy to me now, but I still, I still do listen to it uh, from time to time. But that just covers my rock music. I do have favorite composers. Uh, we got people like Doyle W. Donahue, uh, Stephen Sondheim, Austin Winery, Darren Korb, and Ainon Zur. And uh, Stephen Sondheim is known for his um, musicals. He's done, um, well, my personal favorite is uh, Sweeney Todd, the, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Um, I think he's, he, I mean, that, that musical is just fantastic. Um, but the other four, Doyle, Austin, Darren, and Ainon, they all write uh, 
video game soundtracks. And I'm going to touch on that later on in another question about why I don't really have any movie uh, composers in, in my top list. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think I think that's that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, Martin Jacob and Jasmine Roland, or Jasmine Roland, they uh, asked me about my personal favorite genres or least favorite genres. Uh, my personal favorite is kind of a cop-out, but it's no genre. Um, I don't particularly like any specific genre as itself. I'm a big fan of when genres meld which uh, kind of ties into my top three favorite bands. None of them are really pigeonholed into a certain style, especially not in their later works. Um, you know, your first album, you kind of have an idea of what you want to do, and you kind of stick with that. But it, I really enjoy music that branches out and incorporates things from all bands, um, or all genres. So basically, the less that it sounds like a specific genre, the more I'm going to like it. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, I enjoy solid writing more than uh, like fancy musicianship. So uh, I do enjoy things that I can analyze. Um, so I kind of do lean more towards prog music, or not not the prog genre, but more progressive music stuff that's that's not simple music. But that doesn't mean that I also don't enjoy simple songs that I can just relate to on an emotional or lyrical level as well. As for least favorite genre, this is this is this is the this is the thing about movies. Background music. I hate back I know it's not a genre. <laughs> it's not a genre, but it is a type of music that I just hate. I don't hate country. I don't hate rap. I know those are two of the biggest ones that people tend to say I don't like. Um, I like every genre of music to some point or another. There's something to glean from it, but I hate background music. I hate club music where it's the same four bars and it's kind of repetitious just so you can dance to it, just, just to provide a beat. I hate modern mu music soundtracks, modern movie soundtracks, because they're built to just disappear into the movie. They're supposed to basically provide uh, a foundation for the movie to exist without actually interfering with the visuals and the narrative, and I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, just like a quick example, hum a Star Wars tune. Any of them. There's like at least four or five good themes that you can hum. Um, <clears throat> now hum a Marvel theme. Hum Iron Man's theme. Captain America, Avengers. Now on the flip side, if you're old enough, you could probably hum Wonder Woman's theme or Superman's theme from their classic television shows. This is a huge difference between old soundtrack writing and new soundtrack writing, and I hate it. Um, if you want to dive down this rabbit hole, um, just look up temp music or temp scoring on YouTube and, uh, you know, I guess get ready to be disappointed because uh, scoring to be invisible and scoring against temp music is just, it's ruining music in, in movies. It's, it's so bad that even Danny Elfman has had to do it. He's had to rein in his compositional chops to write I mean, the dude is a genius. He's written so many memorable songs, and he even he's had to kind of rein it in and write this invisible music, even against temp scores uh, on a couple of films. So uh, he's been kind of vocal about temp music kind of being really bad for the the industry. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my rant. I I hate modern most. I mean, it's obviously not everything. It's not a blanket statement, but for the majority of a lot of your, your big Hollywood action films are going to have invisible background music. John Williams still exists, I think. I think he's still writing soundtracks. Maybe not. But the last John Williams movies I've, uh, I've heard, or scores I've heard, you know, he's still writing really strong, melodic uh, stuff. I don't, I don't think he's been doing any of this stuff. But, uh, yeah, so it exists. There's still movies with strong melodic identities in the background music, but 
um, or in the, the score. But for the most part, we see a lot of music that exists just to take up, just to fill the soundscape. Uh, all right, all right, that's <clears throat> that's done. All right, so Ryan Kennedy, Ricardo Rodriguez, Samuel Sutton, uh, they all asked me about my instruments, what I play. Um, you see my bass and my guitar right here. I have a, an Ibanez five string and a, a Squire Strat back there. The Squire is just a, uh, I think it's just a hundred dollar learner guitar, but I've had it for like a decade and a half and it's just I like the way it sounds and you know if it ain't broke don't fix it so I still got that I have a Casio CTK 2100 keyboard sitting here under my monitors um, oh, I have this Yamaha PSS 130 this thing is ancient um, I don't know if you really can see but the keys are yellowing that's I mean it's just an old thing but it has such a solid synth sound I love it I can't bear to get rid of it um, it just sounds like the 60s and 70s 70s 80s maybe synths it's just uh, real solid I have my um, <clears throat> my uh, dang I can't think of the brand I have my trumpet I've shown that off in the video before um, I don't know why I can't think of the brand. I have a custom Warburton mouthpiece for it. Um, yeah. Yep. And, uh, oh, and I have a, an Elise's DM6 electronic drum kit, but it's packed up in storage. Unfortunately, I don't have room for it anymore, which is a little disappointing. I do enjoy playing it. But uh, I'm not a really good drummer. It's it's just kind of something I wanted to pick up, uh, and I... I you know, I, I put some time into it. I'm not horrible. I can keep a simple beat, but I'm not going to be dropping any uh, polyrhythms or anything like that. I'm just keeping it on the hi-hat, snare on the backbeat, and, uh, you know, just keeping the time on the bass. You know, I can, I can do that. I can do that. But, uh, you know, you get older, you, you get in a relationship, you have kids, you become a parent, and uh, sometimes you got to give up some stuff because you ain't got space for it anymore. So I hope to break break that out again one day, but it is easily the most space-taking instrument I have. So unfortunately, I, I just don't get to show it off. Um, my daughter has a ukulele that I play more often than her, but uh, technically I guess that would be her instrument. Uh, and that, that answers that question. Let's see. Uh, Charles Murphy, W Stone 2010, Turning Lane Garage Band, Appeased, nope, just those three. And as well as like a bajillion people who have asked on all my other channels, I mean all my other videos, but I only looked at the Q&A video for these questions. Um, they've asked me about my musical history. <clears throat> um, I have received formal training. I, um, funny enough, when I was in like first or second grade, I just, I have this memory in music class, they force us to take all, you know, music and art and uh, maybe dance, I don't remember, just to kind of, you know, get us introduced to these things in case we get interested in them uh, so we can pursue them when we get older. But I, I remember looking at my friend, we were playing recorder, probably hot cross buns, and I said, I don't know why they teach us this, I'll never need to play an instrument in my life, it's dumb. Uh, fast forward to uh, sixth grade, middle school. And uh, I ended up being forced to take band by my parent, my mom. And I really didn't want to. Uh, I listened to rock music back then. Uh, trumpets were lame. Clarinets were lame. You know, give me an electric guitar. And they didn't teach that at school. So, you know, why do I want to do this? I hated it. Uh, she made me stay with it for a week. And then she let me quit. And I ended up kind of warming up to it and I ended up doing uh, I played trumpet from middle school high school uh, college university uh, I played classical trumpet as well as jazz trumpet easily have a decade or so worth of uh, experience there uh, I don't really play too much I pick it up every now and then just to bust something out but I've, def I've definitely lost some of my range um, but yeah, when I was in uh, university, I actually, well, when I went to college, I went to college for uh, computer tech. 
uh, computer science. I got my AA in comp sci. Uh, all of my electives were programming based. I had dreams of going on to be a video game uh, programmer. And I became disillusioned with it. Uh, schooling made programming boring, which is real sad. Uh, when I finished my AA, I went on to university and decided to switch over to music composition. I took um, courses for composition. I took courses for theory. I took a bunch of history courses and world music courses. I learned about instruments and musical styles from all around the world, periods all throughout time. Um, I was in the band for, you know, a few semesters. Unfortunately, though, my funding ran out. University is a lot more expensive than community college. And uh, so I, I absorbed as much as I could, uh, kind of eschewing all the other electives and all the other stuff. I, like, focused in on music because I knew I was running out of money. And, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I absorbed all that I could. As far as I'm concerned, I have a music compositional degree, music composition degree, because um, there's only like a two or three music classes that I didn't end up um, taking. So yeah, so that is my formal training. I, I have university training for composition and for playing. Playing was for the trumpet. Uh, you know, that's that's what I was good at at the time. Um, Charles specifically asked if my taste in music changed after receiving formal training. Yes. Before, like I said, before I got into band and music and stuff, I listened to rock. I thought rock was the only thing worth listening to. And music opened up my mind. Uh, you know, during the process, I hated it. They made us listen to jazz. They made us listen to classical music. They made us uh, identify music throughout the ages. You know, they play a piece. Is that Renaissance or Baroque? You know, is that 20th century? Kind of stuff like that. And when you're forced to do it, you hate it. But I appreciate what all of these um, teachers and professors did. And eventually, you know, just drilling it in, eventually, you know, it, it got to me. And, and you, when you leave school and you're, you're on your own and you're learning about stuff, uh, out on your own, you tend to appreciate it more, and I've come to appreciate music from all across the spectrum. So, yeah, my musical tastes have definitely changed. And uh, he also asked if before starting the channel, if I had difficulty finding the time to keep up with new music, otherwise known as parenting. Yes, of course. Um, most of the albums I have are from my teenage years. And that's just because I, you know, I get a band, I hear it, I get absorbed with it, and I stick with it for a few years. Um, there are probably a solid four years in my life where the only music I listened to was a playlist with every My Chemical Romance and every The You song on it. And uh, I used to call it the Burton Gerard Superpower Hour. And I, like I said, for like four years, easily, if I was in my car, that playlist was on. And that's all I listened to. Um, you know, lately I've done that human abstract periphery. If I get in the car, that's usually what I throw on. So yeah, this, this channel has helped me broaden, um, my musical sound, my musical, uh, I'm blanking out on words. Uh, I'm learning, I'm learning about new music here. Uh, yeah, so definitely. Let's see. Next up on the list, Turing Lane Garage Band. Uh, outside of uh, asking about my musical history, he asked me uh, if I well, why why was I inspired to start the channel? One, I wanted to learn about new music, and YouTube's trending did not work. Um, I was trying to broaden even more. I think my first video was actually a pop song, Selena Gomez, I think, and uh, I was just trying to broaden out a bit and just so happened that the people who appreciate my videos just happen to be mostly rock and metal people so it kind of aligns with my previous you know rock uh, centric ideas so I'm kind of learning more about metal that I mean that works for me I I, I don't mind that I, I hope I can kind of uh, help you guys out as well on on your musical journeys and introduce you to some new stuff as well so all right, so Appeased Beast and Giant Mushroom Tree and Agent Tex RVB all asked if I can show you my music someday, and I don't hide it. If you go to my YouTube channel, 
youtube.com slash c slash critical reactions I think is the uh, the link on the right hand side it says similar channels or sister channels or something like that uh, critical compositions is on there that is my channel where I put my music a lot of the stuff there is old I think it's uploaded was three day three years ago but a lot of the stuff is from even before that I unfortunately haven't had a lot of time to write music um, in the last decade, and it's something that I would like to, not, not, I've written music in the last decade, but I haven't really put a lot of time towards that hobby, uh, you know, life comes quick when you become a parent, and you got bills stacking up, and kids to raise, and it, uh, it kind of sucks that that part of my life had to be packed away for a bit, but I hope to change that soon, uh, I have a lot of ideas in my head, I have, like, there's only seven or eight songs I think up up on the YouTube page critical compositions um, it's mostly the stuff that I have felt is complete and I can put out into the world but I have you know hundreds <laughs> of uh, you know started ideas or stuff that I've 70% written stuff that needs to be mixed stuff that's just a single riff or a single melodic idea that I need to build other things around um, so yeah, it's uh, I have stuff I've written up on the internet. It's not hard to find. It's actually on my YouTube channel, and hopefully there will be more stuff there soon. Soon trademarked. Soon trade. Uh, so let's see. Now we're getting into the unique questions. Ernesto Gamez says, why don't you react to other stuff other than music? Fun fact, my first few videos was actually a reaction to the Diablo 3... Diablo 4 trailer, a reaction to the Netflix series The Witcher trailer, and um, I want to say there was uh, a cover reaction, uh, I don't know. Anyways, I had a lot of stuff, and music is what stuck. The Selena Gomez video did okay, and then I did Ludens by Bring Me the Horizon, and that exploded, so I decided to stick with music. Um, I don't think I would mind branching out into other sort of, uh, reactions. Um, I like to consider myself a renaissance man, uh, when it comes to, like, videography. I understand, you know, shot composition and color grading and, uh, you know, the different types of transition shots. you got your J shots and your L shots and stuff like that. Um, so I understand a little bit about that. I also do video editing animations and stuff like that the uh the social media stuff let's see if i can bring this back up these i actually made them the other day by hand uh you know all the animations are done by me um so i understand uh on like a basic level some of this stuff but music is definitely my expertise so i'm kind of glad that got picked up but my big problem right now is time i barely have time to get the five videos out a week for this and i don't think i could add on to that right now and even if I could, I have other music-related things I want to do. Um, like maybe uh, I'm looking at like Brian recommendations, where instead of reacting to what you guys want, I show you stuff that I enjoy. Um, Patreon suggestions, where my Patreons each get to pick a specific band. So, uh, you know, if there's something, rather than voting on it, which is kind of random, what you get to vote on, they get to pick a specific thing. There's, there's other videos that I want to do with the music stuff first. So, uh, time is really the reason why I don't react to other things. Uh, Richard Irving says, can I do more album reviews? Uh, concept albums like Native Construct and Between the Buried and Me definitely need long-form videos. I agree. I would love to after doing um, the Ginger Micro one. It was definitely something I was expecting to expand on. But then COVID happened and I ran out of time. Time time is the, the thing right here that keeps me from doing all this cool stuff. A lot of people ended up with more time after COVID. Um, and I ended up with less. You know, most people didn't go to their jobs and stuff. They were stuck at home. But uh, my partner ended up not, not uh, being able to go to work. So she was home. She gets stir crazy, kind of doting after her. I'm used to staying at home. Uh being a, uh, a stay-at-home dad for so long and uh, my kid was out of school so now I'm doing the parenting thing all day 
and uh, my stepbrother didn't have his job shut down so but his daycare did so I've been watching my niece as well uh, so I have two kids to watch and a partner that's here all day and she's a social butterfly so she can't just sit in a corner and do nothing uh, so I've uh, you know I've been doing family stuff my, my family activities have increased since the quarantine so I've actually had less time to devote towards this but uh, yeah I can guarantee that once everything once the world resets and uh you know school goes back in and, and jobs go back in and, and all that stuff and I can uh you know have six hours every day to uh to devote to this channel then yeah we'll do album album reviews. Perennial Lotus says a question I had from an earlier video uh, would you recommend going to school to learn about composing or is there a self taught alternative? Yes and no. School is good for a foundation, uh, especially once you start taking music theory classes. And uh, music composition classes are very good because you'll have a professor who can give you compositional criticism. Um, that's not something you can really get too much in the real world. If you play poorly, uh, there's always, you know, uh, instruments, in instrumentalists musicians that's the word there's musicians who can critique your playing um you know am i playing this well and they could say well you know your your strumming's a little sloppy or you know whatever you need a little bit more air pushed through when you're singing or playing this instrument whatever um, but composition's a little more difficult to get good criticism on uh, a lot of people it's easier to play an instrument than to write music i think or at least it seems that way uh, so having professors who can cr criticize and give you, um, you know, pointers is, is definitely something that you can get easier at school than you can get in real life. But aside from that, being a good composer is really about doing. The more you write, the better you'll get at it, just like anything. So you can write without going to school. You can learn the basics of music theory without going to school. Just start YouTubing. Uh, you know, chord shapes, chord progressions, um, chor uh, scale modes, um, uh, you know, check out counterpoint and, and, and whatever, just, you know, start looking up music composition tutorials on YouTube. They're not all going to be great, but as long as you're learning something, it's going to add to your toolbox that you can compose with. And while you're learning this stuff, say you just learned about counterpoint, make a song about counterpoint. Just kind of make two of them, make three of them, make four of them. Don't even finish a song. Just write two melodic lines. Uh, your, your next question was, you heard me mention counterpoints in videos, uh, and you have a general idea, but you're not sure what it means. It's when you have two melodies going on at the same time. So if you have like... Do -do 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 uh, if you have that and then you have just chords under that, or if you have a simple bass line under that, you know, do 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 that's that's not counterpoint. You have a melodic line and you have a supporting line. If you also if you play that original melodic line but you also have da 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 now you have two competing melodic lines. That's counterpoint. Um, that doesn't mean it's good counterpoint, but it's counterpoint. You have two melodic lines. That's all it is. Um, but yeah, you take, you take those ideas, you make a composition about it. Just write two melodic lines and then try to do some cool stuff with it. Like fill in the gaps of one with the playing of the other. Um, you can be a compose. you can be a self-taught composer. I fully believe that. It's not like building a bridge where you, there's specific rules you have to know where the bridge collapses and you kill people. Uh, music is art and art is subjective, so you can learn that on your own. But there are benefits to going to school, like I said. Having that, uh, you know, a teacher to criticize your comp your comp compositions is, uh, it's, it's vital. You definitely need that to help you find out your weaknesses. And it's not something you can get outside of school easily. Um, and then theory classes, just having the structure of a, of a semester helps if you need that structure. Otherwise, like I said, you can learn a lot of the basics of theory online. 
And uh, his third question, have you played any of the Soulsborne games? I, I have not. I know about them. They're like super hard stuff, but I, I've never played one. Uh, he would recommend Bloodborne or Dark Dark Souls 3. I'll keep that in mind, but uh, you know I don't really have a lot of time to learn hard games, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Josh Clyburn, Clyburn says, recommendations for recording software. I have a MacBook Pro from 2016 and not looking for incredibly complex systems. Reaper. I think the website is reaper.fm. Yep, reaper.fm. Um, it is phenomenal. It's only $60. Don't let the price fool you. It is extremely powerful if that's what you need. It is sort of user friendly, um, but it is, it is easily the best. Uh, uh, DAW that you could get, especially in that price range. Uh, I've used Cubase before. I've used Music Creator. I've used Pro Tools. Um, I've used, I think I used GarageBand a long time ago. Um, and Reaper is just, Reaper's on the same level as a lot of them, and it's a fraction of the price. So that's what I would recommend to pretty much anybody, um, unless you need something hyper professional. Manea de Odo, have you considered doing something less spontaneous than a reaction video, maybe a video essay, where you talk about a song or showcase a certain musical concept or structure? Yes. Um, I actually, the last five years of my YouTube experience has been doing video essays. Um, I did tutorials for a, uh, a software to help you uh, change the buttons on controllers and keyboards and stuff like that um, and it was all scripted and hyper uh, edited and produced um, that's kind of in my blood I prefer to do scripted stuff but again I don't really have the time for it right now um, as I kind of have a, a perfectionist idea of production stuff and it pretty much takes me an hour to edit a single minute of a video I don't know how, I know a few people kind of sit in that same pocket. I don't know how that fits across the board. I don't know if that's normal or abnormal, but um, I do a lot of, of editing stuff like that. And I guess I could do something with lower production value, but just scripted and maybe fit that in. Um, but again, like other things, time is kind of the, the issue right now. But yes, I do, um, I do want to do some some scripted content. I asked on Twitter if anybody would be interested in a scripted video about um, covers, music covers, and uh, I didn't get any negativity, but I didn't really have a lot of people on the on the Twitter following me on Twitter either, so it wasn't a very strong reaction of positivity either. But uh, yeah, it's something I want to do. I just got to find the time to do it. Uh, Bike for a Day says, which of your D&D characters has been your favorite to play? That is, uh, that is a, a big, I don't know, assumption there. I've never played d and I've played D&D uh, themed video games. I have, uh, I've owned a three, uh, version 3.5 PHB, but I've never actually played d and I've never found a group to do it in. However, I like the idea of playing a bard who's also a drunkard and just kind of stumbles through all of the quests. I, I don't know. That sounds awesome. <clears throat> Laros82 says, do you like 80s synth stuff, like either original 80s or new stuff like Synthwave? Don't know. Never heard of either. But I do like the way a lot of synths sound. Not so much like the uh, the square sound. I actually have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've tried to get into like synth uh, production and none of it makes any sense to me. But uh, I do like some synth sounds and I don't like others, so... You know, maybe I'll like some synth wave and not like others. Uh, Categorilla says, are you part of a band or have you been part of a band in the past? Yes. Um, <coughs> in my late high school, early college days, I was in a local band called, well, obviously a local band. It's kind of hard to be in a non-local band. Called uh, We were originally called Save the Silence. I replaced their original bassist. Um, 
and after playing a couple of uh, shows with them, we went to record our first full-length EP, our full-length album. Uh, there is a movement to change the band's name to Hampton Bay Lights, and uh, we recorded a couple of songs. We had the concept going, and the band fell apart, unfortunately. But uh, you know that was that was a good six eight months of my life. Uh, we did like a not post like a punk post hardcore kind of band, maybe pop rock. I don't I don't even I don't know these subgenres. <laughs> we I was in a rock band. Um, I played bass in it, and I do have some night vision footage, like black and white footage from a night show. Uh, maybe I'll put it up somewhere on the internet and you guys can see how cringy I was as a 20-something. Pierre de la Marne says, Is there a particular thing that you really appreciate in songs? Uh, yeah, cleverness. Uh, I like it when you do something cheeky. Uh, a little callback to another genre, a callback to another band, a callback to another song. Um, Dream Theater got a little smirk out of me when they put in, uh, what was that, Twinkle Twinkle? ABC, I don't remember, man. Um, Dream Theater had a, like a kid's jingle or something. Oh, Jingle Bells, that's what it was. They put like one bar of jingle bars, jingle bells in there. That got a smirk out of me. Um, or any time that you can really play with my expectations, like the earlier video of Vinner Sorg. Uh, I was laughing all throughout that, and not not like laughing at them, just you know laughing, enjoying myself. Um, so yeah, I appreciate being clever, clever with the music. Um, on a more like structural level, I really enjoy. Um, when vocalists layer harsh vocals with cleans, I don't know, something about that just, it always sounds good. I think it's a texture thing. I always really enjoy that though. And of course, uh, mixing sounds in silence. You guys know that I love my syncopation with, uh, you know, playing, utilizing silence just as much as you're using sound. We got a few more of these and then we'll wrap this up. David Blanchard says, Are there any songs you wanted to make to follow are there any songs you wanted to make follow up videos on? He says one of you mentioned that one weakness of the reaction video is you don't have time to think and analyze the music with more context. Uh, would you consider doing more polished in depth videos? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, pretty much any band that I feel like I scratched the surface on I'd like to revisit. Uh, mostly that's going to apply to some prog stuff where there's just so much going on, but there's also some speed and thrash stuff that we've touched on that, um, you know, there's so much stuff going on. It just flew by me. Um, yeah, more polished in-depth videos, of course, but again, time. Um, I think this channel is going to look very different in another year, year and a half once I can put, you know, devote more time to it. And I think you guys are going to be very happy with uh, some of the more detailed, long-form, scripted stuff rather than these uh, off-the-cuff reaction videos. Matt Fender says, what do you think about uh, Harry Styles' new solo album? I, I don't know. Should I react to it? Is, is, I mean, is Harry Styles, is he a good, uh, is he a good guitar? Is he like, is he like Pliny? Pliny is a one-man guitar band and he's awesome. Is that what Harry Styles is? He is he a guitarist? I don't know. Uh, Colbean says, "How are you doing, dude? Thank you so much. Uh, I know I kind of put out a Q and A to learn more about me, but uh, you know, questions like this are really cool too. I I'm doing well. Uh, it could be doing better. Uh, losing my mind a bit, staying in the house, but uh, you know, I'm kind of used to it. It's what I do anyways. It's it's more about." you know, just being forced to. <laughs> I preferred to stay in the house when it was my choice, when I was told to. I don't know, it's some weird uh, human thing, I guess. Something about our dumb lizard brains. Um, but yeah, I'm doing well, overall. I'm getting to see my family more, which is which is really cool. Work and school are kind of disrupted to family life, I think. 
not 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 to bash work or school. I think they're 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 needed. They're required. I'm not trying to say anything controversial. Uh, you know, it's just uh, family life is really cool when everybody's home all the time. And uh, Jonathan and Raguba both asked about video game music. If there's anything that I really like, um, yes. Yes, I mentioned earlier my favorite composers were Doyle W. Donahue, who, uh, well, Austin Wintry, Darren Corbin, Einon Zer. Um, as far as specific albums, Doyle's uh, Donovore 2 album, or soundtrack, beautiful, fantastic. Austin Wintry does fantastic whatever he touches, but Journey and Monaco would be two of my favorite soundtracks. Darren Corb is a, uh, he can he can write anything However, I specifically uh, suggest the Bastion and Transistor soundtracks. And Ainan Zur wrote the Dragon Age Origins soundtrack, as well as some of the Dragon Age 2 soundtrack, but he has stated that he's not happy with the final production of it and wishes that he had more time. He said it felt rushed. But Dragon Age Origins, fantastic. Um, yeah, so those would be my video game soundtrack recommendations. Um... And then we have Christian Canna and Kai Henrik. Nope. Yep. Yep. Both of them have asked about uh, what video games I play. Old stuff. I I not a big fan of modern big budget games. I think they're fun roller coasters, but I have to be in the mood for that. Uh, I I guess I'm just kind of an old school guy. I like my uh, I play Doom almost like once a year it's just a solid game you get in and you, you play you don't gotta worry about story or anything like that that's not to say i don't like story and game i just finished the uncharted trilogy since um you get it for free on the playstation 4 for the quarantine thing and that was fun i mean that, that was that was a, a fun way to spend uh, a few weeks but i i just really enjoy games i can get into like right now i'm kind of hooked on rocket league you get into a game you play for five minutes and you're done uh, so yeah, um, Kai also says, what was my favorite band as a child, a teen, and now adult? Adult Child would probably be Metallica. That's what my dad loved. He listened to it all the time. I'd say he's still the world's biggest Metallica fan. Um, so naturally, I was as well. As a teenager, My Chemical Romance, they used, uh, they pretty much defined my teenage years. And as an adult, um... I don't know. The, like I said, the used is still my number one. I don't think they'll ever not be. But periphery and and human abstract, they're up there. They're all they're all kind of tied. Uh, Laros eighty two says, "What kind of board games do you play? Nerdy stuff like Descent or more traditional ones?" Um, I play everything in between. I guess I'm not a real big fan of of American board games. Milton Bradley, Hasbro, stuff like that. You can kind of keep them. Fantasy Flight though make some really solid stuff. I think they're American based. Um, I really like them. My favorite board game creator is Reiner Knizia. He is, I don't know where he's from actually. He has won plenty of Spiel de Jour. He is a genius when it comes to board games. Um, I'd say if you can get anything by him, it's worthwhile. If you have a a group that likes to play cooperative stuff. His version of Lord of the Rings is bar none one of the best cooperative games I've ever played. Um, otherwise, I like Descent. I mean, Descent's, I think Descent is Fantasy Flight, actually. Maybe not. Um, but mostly, I, I like to play European board games. Um, I just think they're really good. And if you want to get into super nerdy stuff, I love Squad Leader. Squad Leader is a World War II uh, infantry-based game. And, uh, well, let's just say the rule book is so long that instead of teaching you all the rules, at one time, you take, like, two or three pages and you play a scenario about those rules to learn them. And there's, like, 30 scenarios. <laughs> um, and by the time you finish all the scenarios, you finally know all the rules. And then they made Advanced Squad Leader with more rules. So... Yeah, that's that's good stuff, but it's expensive. Squad leader can get real expensive. Uh, all right, that that wraps this up. 
What are we sitting at? 45 minutes? Well, if you're still here, I hope you learned something about me. Um, I enjoyed doing this, and maybe I'll do it again when we hit, like, uh, I don't know, 50,000 or something. I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to know about me. So maybe I push it off till we get some, some more new subscribers. I don't know. I want to thank you all for, you know, helping me get here. I think we're at, like, 5,700. What are we looking at? Oh, I can't even count. Dang. We're at 6830. I said we're about to hit six. We're about to hit 7,000 subscribers. So I'm super late on this. Um, yeah, so we are 68% of the way to 10K, which is huge. My other big channel, the one I was talking about, um, about the, the controller software, uh, is like, like 1.3K and it took four years to get there. So, uh, yeah, this is this is really big. I want to thank everybody for helping me get here, uh, especially all the recommendations. You guys drive the channel. Uh, I, I couldn't do this without you because my musical knowledge, especially in metal, which is what apparently a lot of you want to listen about, is, uh, is not that strong at all. <laughs> I am learning about new bands every day. I did not even know this many bands existed. The spreadsheet is about to break 600 bands right now kind of crazy. I also want to thank my Patreons um, for helping me kind of select the songs as we go and, and the bands and let me know, you know, what really wants to be seen as well as helping me out financially. Um, you know, things have been a little, a little tight recently uh, for everybody, I'm sure. And uh, the cool thing is, is once the next month hits, um, I will be able to purchase a proper light for this setup so I won't be dependent upon a window anymore and I'll also be able to change where my desk is since I don't need to put it by a window and maybe we can have less of a mess in the background so that'd be pretty cool so I want to thank my patreons for helping me out with all this as well um, everybody who's helping me out with the you know whether you're just commenting whether you're just watching if you're sharing I see there's a lot of um, views coming in from uh, social media platforms at, or if you're helping out financially with Patreon, everybody who's helping me with this channel, I want to thank you so much. It's uh, you know, it's 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 a wild a wild ride. I never thought the the channel I started would come this far. I know seven thousand isn't a lot, but it's a lot to me. And uh, so you guys are amazing. I couldn't do this without you. And I'm I'm glad that we've got to go this far to make a Q and A session. So that's pretty cool. Let's uh. You know, we're about to hit 10K. Let's let's push for 50, I guess. I don't know. Is, is, that, is that we just keep setting the goal higher, right? When do I get one of those cool plaques I can put on the wall and, and act snobby about it? I want to be snobby about a YouTube plaque. I don't know if I could be snobby. Maybe. Yeah, hey, I've got a YouTube plaque. Look at me. I've got so many subscribers. I don't know. All right, so I think <laughs> I think I've done enough stupid stuff at the the ending of this video. Uh, thanks for all the questions. I hope the answers were sufficient, and I'll be back tomorrow with uh, the next folk metal song, Doodad. Maybe we can get something that to me sounds folky. That'd be pretty cool because we haven't really done that yet. I'm rambling. The video needs to end. We're almost at an hour. Uh, thanks for the questions. I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you next time. You will see me next time. Adios.